good morning good morning to one and all present here i shrikant student manager of shri balaji society feel honored and privileged to introduce our chief guest for today mr sv nathan partner and chief talent officer deloitte india sir is a member of the indian indian leadership team and serves on the talent executive leadership for apac region as well sir has over 30 years of experience in hr management across diverse industries he is an industry leader and has vast experience in building and leading high performance teams globally sir is a regular speaker at several national and global forums on contemporary hr issues sir was recognized with distinguished alumnus award by xlri his alma mater sir has previously served on the board of the nhrd network as its national secretary and he currently serves as the chairman of sumedas a not for profit education and research body devoted to organization development apart from being an avid reader writer and a blogger sir is known for his hashtag office truth posts on linkedin we consider ourselves fortunate to have sir with us to bless and guide the future managers sitting here today sir the floor is all yours thank you everybody first of all i want to let you know that sitting out here and watching all of you you know it's very overwhelming it's really overwhelming it's it's um it's really a privilege to be here in balaji society i've known professor bala for several years exceedingly fine man very nice man and you can learn so much from him in just the short interaction that one can have with him i think what i would certainly want to do today is uh, spend some moments sharing a few thoughts with you i have only one small request to make of you my request is um how many of you really believe that you have the gift of attention raise your hands i don't see a lot of hands going up it just means that others could be distracted by your mobiles right so for the next few minutes if you can all but do one thing get out from your mobiles if you want to take pictures of this gentleman who is sitting out there please do so but otherwise if you can just be with me in the moment that i would believe is a great gift to this institution i'm told that a good address is something which has a good beginning a very quick ending and nothing in between and that's exactly what i'm trying to do today i've been to this campus many a time and each time when i come in i'm overwhelmed by just the grace the warmth and the way that this has grown over a period of time one thing i can tell you balaji institution is all about progress is all about progress you would be and should be very privileged to be part of balaji society how are institutions born is something that have always been on my mind there was i understand there was this young boy who went up to his grandfather and asked him grandpa tell me why are there no birds around here so the grandfather tells his grandson he says that's because there are no trees why are there no trees is it because nobody cared to plant trees all we do is cut them down and somehow this young child felt that there was something wrong in the way that things were happening in the world so he said okay let me plant one one sapling today he did this every day of his life several saplings and uh, today this gentleman has a forest which he has created the name of this gentleman is padmashri payang yadav and padmashri prayang yadav is very well known 
in the country for he is known as a forest man. Today, if you look at the field of education and you look at what a person can create because there is a vacuum in some place, that Padmashri Payangadam equivalent is Balasar. How many of you like stories? Shameless people. I thought you're all going to come here and listen to something out here, but I'll share some stories with you. So, many, many years ago, there was this old lady, and she used to be living in a very modest house, one room. That's all that they had. That was the kitchen, that was their living room, drawing room, everything was just that. And what they also had was for privacy curtain, because there's something that so this lady used to be the grandmother, four grandchildren, and um, for privacy curtains, they had those jute bags. And the jute bags used to be cut open and stitched. And that was like a pardha for them. And that's what they had. And in the evening, she used to have a bowl of curd, curd rice, four grandchildren. And there was uh, another boy who used to always join this party because this old lady used to tell a lot of stories. And I used to join them as one of those people out there because she's, she really, really told some fantastic stories. And one day what happened was, one of, um, one of the grandchildren got distracted. Why did the grandchild get distracted? Because there was a car that went by. Then immediately the grandmother slapped the boy and said, I'm talking to you, you're not listening to me. Grandmother, uh, the, grand, the grandchild said, sorry grandmother, you know, I got distracted. Because in my mind, I was asking myself, can I ever sit in a car? Can I ever sit in a car? No. Remember, these are, these are people who have never sat in cars. The drawing room on that particular day was the pavement. So look. Yes? And um, the grandmother says, yes, you can. All you have to do is work hard, have a dream. But if you want to sit in the car, sit in the front. You're sitting in the front, the car must be yours. You must be driving it. And if you're sitting behind, the car must be yours. The driver must be also be yours. Now this child was baffled. Because how do you sit in a car? They don't even have two square meals a day. The child used to go to a corporation school. And the corporation school you have to sit on the ground. Because there are no benches or tables. And you use slates. That was the kind of environment. Good education though. And I still remember the grandmother used to darn the seat of the pants on Saturdays and Sundays because you had just about two pairs of trousers that a child can use. Fast forward, every day when I sit in my car and I travel to work or I travel elsewhere, I remember this grandmother. This grandmother because this grandma gave the child a dream and said, you can if you think you can. I remember that grandmother because the boy who got slapped that day for getting distracted is speaking to you. And that and that grandmother um, was my very own grandmother. She had all but one leg. I will never forget her in my life. That was my dream. It was not a grand dream, but it was my dream. But it is important for us to know that if you really have to advance in your own lives and careers, have a goal, have an aim, have a dream. You also are here as students. One of the things you got to know is what are you truly good at? 
What motivates you? I remember years ago, there was this boy and he was in an institution of learning and every day he used to go study. One day when he was in the library, somebody came up to him and asked him, he said, what are you doing? Because we are all going to be playing. And this boy said, um, well, I'm studying because I think I have to do well in my studies. The other man who came to distract him and said, why didn't we go for a cup of tea? He stood up and he said, no, I don't want to do this because I really have to do something for my parents. This boy said, what can you do? Because anyway, you're not going to be in the top 5% of the class. What can you do? What, what can you do? And this boy said, I tell you what, I will stand first in every single paper from here on. If it means that this is the last thing I will do before I leave this institution, I will do everything in my power. It so happened that at the end of the semester, this boy, who is a very inspiring person for me, stood first in every single paper. Because he understood his motivation. His motivation was when somebody provokes him, then he will act. Instead, if we know what is our axis of motivation, that would be so much better. Can we work from a point of evocation instead of provocation? But you must know what motivates you. Does a challenge motivate you? When somebody says you cannot do this and I will go and do it, does that motivate you? What motivates you is important. You will all get into the industry. And in the industry, one thing is very certain. The industry stands up for people who are respected. People will respect you in the industry and you will see this over a period of time and there are several parents out here and you're all from the industry and perhaps your businessmen as well. And you will know this for sure. Years ago, I used to be working in a manufacturing company. In those days, um, you were asked to do anything and everything. And I was a student of... Um, XLRI, a, a, a fairly well-known institution. And I had gone up to this British multinational where I was working. My boss said, from tomorrow, you have to look after transport. Transport? How many of you would like to do a job as a transport in charge? Raise your hand. <laughs> I am not surprised. There are only a couple of hands. Uh -huh. Transport in charge. I rose up to my full height of 5 feet 6 inches and I said, Sir, I don't want to do this. He says, do it because you learned something. So I took it on. First day, two things happened. As soon as I took on the job, my, there was somebody who came up and said, I want a car and I need to go. And this was all in Bihar. Now, uh, in those good old days, it was Bihar. Now, uh, I have a reputation. If I stay in a place for more than eight years, the state splits. So I was in, in a place called Gumia, which is in Bihar. Stayed there for eight years, state split. Jharkhand and Bihar. So now this place is in Jharkhand. And uh, those days, no Uber, no Ola, no tourist taxis, nothing. They wanted a car. I went up to the garage mechanic and I said, Pai Lagu Sarkar, I really need your help. Do something for me. He said, Sir, e gadi na chali. There's no way that this car is ever going to move. So I said, it's okay. So went up and I told this gentleman, I said, there's no car today, but I'll give it to you tomorrow. This man complained to my CEO. The CEO called me to his room. I was just barely six months old in that job. In that organization, six months. In that job, less than 24 hours. I said, job, uh, well, this car, guy is not available. CEO called me and he started to fire me. He was so mad at me because he said, you do not know this, you do not know that. And I was trying to explain to him that there is as much as I can do, nothing more. He did not heed. And just at that moment, when everything was going to erupt around me, there was a man who came running in front and stood in front of me and he looked at me and he said, 
Nathan, please go back to my office. I'll see you there. He looked at the CEO and he said, I am here. I am accountable. While you may hold this person responsible, hold me accountable. And then I have no idea what happened because he came back later. Um, the name of this gentleman, I will never forget because in the time when I needed him the most, he came running. I, he didn't even know this. Will I ever forget Captain Nautial? I will never forget him. Captain Nautial, yes, you want to go, applaud for him. <laughs> one thing you must know is, how should one stand up for another? Standing up for another is one of the most important traits. You learn this when you experience it. Never throw any of your friends, colleagues, boss under the bus. Never do that. Stand up for them. That's how you'll be recognized. Grow up. That's my next. I was not promoted for eight years of my life. When I joined this organization, it was a British multinational, ICI. I didn't get promoted. You get promoted. I mean, after two years, they'll give you a notional I was made an officer. So I was a industrial relations officer. Hey, by the way, I don't see a lot of, uh, how many people have chosen human resources and who are men in this audience? One, two, three, four, I can, five, six, seven, eight. I need more men in this, uh, you know, in, in, in this function. I really need more men. How many women? have chosen this profession. Oh my God. Oh boy, this is like, everybody out here is, yes, we need more men. I think, um, I can tell you this, I would ideally like a 50% men, 50% women to join this, this great function. Anyways, I didn't get promoted. Eight years, I went up to my boss and I said, is something wrong with me? Is something wrong with me that I've not been promoted for eight years? And he looked at me and he said, no, nothing is really wrong with you. You're like a bamboo shoot. So I said, what is with bamboos? So he said, I didn't know this. Bamboos grow underground for five whole years. For five years, all the growth that they see is for a good foundation. And in one year, just one year, the bamboo will grow to a height of 80 feet. One year. He looked at me and he said, you are like the bamboo. And suddenly I didn't know whether I was going to be happy or sad, but it made me feel very good. I left. Uh, also what happened was I got double promoted. It's the first time it had happened in the, in, you know, in, in the entire history of the firm worldwide. And I was, no, no, it's, no, no, it's not about me. It's about a message that I want to give to the students. Remember, if you don't get promoted, it means nothing. It just means you're like the bamboo shoot. You're growing inside. You're growing underneath the ground. All these visages of growth of what happens outside of the soil is nothing. You need to grow within, under the ground, because as you grow as a professional, that's when you really shoot. Um, one of the things that I will share with all of you is a small story of somebody who meant a lot to me in my life. I did my mathematics and um, why mathematics? Because I wanted to do engineering. I couldn't get admission in an engineering college in, in Madras because my results were late. I'm from Nagpur and my father couldn't afford to put something out there as money to get me educated in Nagpur. Anyway, I ran to Madras, went to this college and I said, can I get economics? Because I said, I'll get into IAS and do something like that. And he said, no, I'll give you mathematics. Or you have an alternate, you can take Sanskrit. 
Sanskrit. And at that moment, I was really dying. I said, give me something that I like, but not mathematics. So, anyways, um, he said, you can take only mathematics. So, I got mathematics. So, different matter, if you don't get what you like, you like what you get. If you don't get what you like, like what you get. Start to work on it. I didn't like mathematics, but I started to work on my maths. Different matter that as soon as I finished my education, I found that I was on top of the heap on mathematics. I did exceedingly well. I won't bore you with what I did because that's not, a, that's not the message. The message is, how can you really do well? The man who made a difference to me was a professor. His name was Francis. Francis is an outstanding gentleman. And I still remember there was an incident where we had a board examinations or rather university examinations. At the university examination in the very last minute, it so happened that there was some subject which was really teasing the hell out of us. We didn't know what to do. The only man who could teach us was Francis. He was bedridden. And he called all the students to his house. And at home, he taught us non-stop. I mean, we gave him gaps to rest, but he taught us, I will never forget that. That's the commitment of that professor. You have many such professors in Balaji. Make sure, make sure that you have a moment and take a moment to thank them. Thank the professors because they are going to change your lives. Well, back at an institute, I had to do industrial relations law. People who are in human resources will know that law is not a subject that you really like. But as I said, if you don't get what you like, you, that's it. So I started doing law, but there was one gentleman who said, I'm not going to do this. But he had to clear his examination. I still remember every day in the evening, there used to be a couple of his friends. And as he sat in the canteen, these two people would sit by his side and keep on telling him all about industrial relations law. And I used to be very surprised. Different matter that the boy passed. Raja, Varadarajan and Professor Bala may know Varadarajan. Varadarajan was really taught by two students who were his friends, industrial relations law. I will never forget that because as students, this is what you need to be doing. Hold up your colleagues. Hold up your fellow students. You will find this in the industry as well because that is what is needed. You really will have to hold up each other. I now want to fast forward and I want to look at what does the industry, what do corporates want out of young professionals? And I have just three things to say to you. Number one, how do students think? What do people think? When young professionals, when they come in, how do they think? And when you talk about thinking is conceptual, analytical, spatial. These are the kinds of thinking that we look at. Are they agile? Are they fast? Second, what did they do or how did they do? Are these the people who take the initiative? I was very, very happy to see a number of people receive their certificates. Apologies, got a little bit mixed up, but um, very happy to see a number of these students because they have taken the initiative. The person who stood first, will you kindly raise your hand or rise? Can you please rise? Thank you so much. Your name is Manoj. Give her another additional round of applause to Manoj. Thank you, Manoj. That requires passion. That requires commitment. That requires focus. Everybody has seen a, fo a, a magnifying glass? Yes? A magnifying glass in your cupboard will do no harm. But if you really, you can use a magnifying glass. If you want to burn paper, what do you do? You focus it. 
And when you get that focus, you can really burn up anything. That's what you got to be doing. So think. Take initiative. Do. And the third, we look at who you really are. What kind of a person are you? Are you positive? Are you a person who has a certain individuality around him or her? There was this wonderful lady who wore a fantastic um, Marathi costume, Maratha costume. So would that lady kindly rise, ma'am? Thank you so much. A round of applause for her. Thank you, ma'am. I really love people like that because it takes a lot of courage and something which is within you because this is what differentiates. Corporates look at who you really are. I really look at people who have a certain, something is different about them. Everything being equal, because if you're in Balaji, everybody is equal, right? But somebody is more equal than another. What is that? Can you take the initiative? Can you drive it? Who you are? That is what differentiates you. Um, there was once a young boy who left the town, uh, his village, and he went outside for about a couple of years and then he returned along with his friend and both of them went in two different directions. One boy went east, another one went west. After a couple of years, it so happened that both of them came back to the village. And on the way, the first boy meets an old man. And he says, hey old man, I'm going to that village. Are you from that village? He says, yes, I'm from that village. I am from that village. He says, how was that village? How is the village now? I left that village two years ago. So he says, how was the village when you left that village? He says, terrible. Children are always on the street. They're always making all kinds of noise. All the women folk, they do not do their normal jobs. They are always out in each other's houses. The men folk, they all chitter, chatter. It's a, it's a mess. It's a terrible place. They, then he says, old man, how is it today? He says, son, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Then, the other boy then lands up. He then asks the same old man. He says, old man, I am from this village. I left it two years ago, etc. How is it today? Old man again says, how was it when you left that village? Old man, it was fantastic. We had all the young boys and young girls. They were all on the streets and they were playing. There was lovely music around and it was just so fantastic. The women were in each other's houses. They were helping each other out. And if there was somebody sick, there would always be somebody who would come there to help. And the men folk, they would gather in the evening and they would spend time looking at what they can do for the village. It was a great place. How is it now? The old man says, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. So if you were a person from the corporate, who will you hire? The first or the second? That's the point I want to make. That's the point. You need people who are positive, who are able to think differently. Okay, I'm now going to fast forward. Three things. This is what you need to demand of your professors, of your friends, of people from the industry, because when you're going for internship, this is what I would expect. What do corporates, when you, are, when you are there in the institute, what will you ask of your professors, industry, when you go on for your internships, what should you ask? Just three things, remember this. One, coach me. First, coach me. Tell me what I'm good at. What are my strengths? Don't tell me you're not this, you're not this, you're not this. I used to be a runner in my younger days. And I remember, you know, one time I wanted to run the 100 meters race. So I went up and on the field, I started to run. And then I looked at the coach and the coach said, you will never be a 100 meters runner. 
and I was so disappointed. He said, your height is only 5 feet 5 inches or 5 feet 6 inches. You can never be a runner. I went home. I started weeping. My mother saw me and said, what's wrong with you, child? She said, I'm so, I'm so uh, upset, Amma, because this man says I cannot run. He says, who says you cannot run? You, you ask a question differently. You go ask him, hey, coach, what am I really good at when I'm running? So I went the next day when I asked the uh, coach and I said, hey, what am I good at? He says, run. This time don't run 100, but run 400. So I started running 400 meters. At the end of 400 meters, he came up to me and says, you will make a very good middle and long distance runner. Uh, different matter. I actually started to focus only on long distance running. I really enjoyed it. Ask your professors, your friends, what you truly are good at. Sometimes I may not be very good in marketing, but I could be very good in systems. Find your edge. Find what you're really good at and work only on that. Don't let somebody come and tell you you're not good in this and think that you know your life is over. Two, teach me. Coach me, teach me. Teach me things that I don't understand. Teach me more than anything, my life skills. You're all in this place in Pune. Many of them may not be. How many of you are not from Pune? My God. I should have asked the question the other way. How many people are from Pune? Okay, just a handful. Okay, very good. Thank you, people, Puneites. Uh, very happy to see your few hands. My son was born in Pune. I always refer to this as Pune because um, it was Pune in those days. I can't change that. Teach me things that I do not know. Teach me life skills. First, coach me, teach me, and then lift me. When I say lift me, there are times when I could be down. When I could be so depressed. There are times I'm not my best all day. When I'm low, you need a sati. You need somebody who's around you. Be one. Lift somebody's spirit. That's what you need to be doing. Three things. Coach me, teach me, lift me. Uh, if you really want to get some very quick wins, and they're all one-liners, one, do simple things exceedingly well. Simple things must be done exceedingly well. Don't look at big things. Do simple things exceedingly well. Number one. Two. Find something good in somebody once a day. Can you all do it? Some of you may be also doing it right today. For example, if you go tell your mother that, uh, Mama, your sari is looking so nice today and you've really worn it so well, what's your mother going to say? Beta, what do you want so that's what they're going to say. They're not going to believe you because you've never done that before. But one minute after you left the room, what, what is the mother doing? She's in front of the mirror. Isn't it? And she's saying, oh, my daughter is a very smart girl. Yes, I'm really looking very nice. Isn't it? Find something good in somebody once a day. This must be the promise that you make. You could do it to your spouse, you could do it to your mother, father, brother, sister. Today WhatsApp is easy. Right? But make sure you do it in a genuine way, authentic way. Do that. Find your area of interest and work on that area of interest. You will become an expert. Maxwell uh, um, said this. He says you work on something for 10,000 hours, you will become an expert. 10,000 hours is the equivalent of five years working. Five years working non-stop on a subject, you would be an expert. So work on something and you'll become an expert. In closing, I will again share another story. This is a story of a Kabliwala. The Kabliwala was in Kabul. He had a daughter. One day he told his daughter, I'm going to India. And tell me, child, what do you want from India? 
says, Papa, I need something really nice. He said, okay, I'll get you something really nice. So the Kablawala came to India and he tried to buy whatever, but he found that these were not the things that his daughter would want. He, one day he was sitting, as he was going, he was sitting under a tree. He noticed there was a lot of parrots. He took a stone and he hit at one of the branches and one of the parrots fell down injured. And immediately he picked up that parrot gingerly and he put it in his bag came to Kabul by which time you know he had already put some bandage and the parrot was fine and he got a golden cage made he put that parrot took it to his daughter and said hey Betty this is for you and as soon as he gave the parrot to his daughter the daughter was so excited he says Papa you're the best Papa in the world and okay fast forward after about a year it was now time for the Kabliwala to come back to India. The parrot had learned how to speak because the daughter had taught the bird how to speak. Boy, uh, the, the man had to come back again. He says, okay, Betty, I know what you want. You want something nice. This is what I've got. Next time I'll get you some sweets. He went up to the parrot and said, hey, there is every possibility that when I come back from India, I could be at that same banyan tree is there any message you want me to give to your brothers and sisters out there? Is there any message that you want me to give? So the parrot says, I live in a golden cage, Malik. You give me the best of Kaju Kishmish, Malik. But tell my brothers and sisters that I'm very unhappy. That I cry when all of you have gone away. And I am deeply pained. I would like you to say this to my, to my brothers and sisters. Well, anyway, came to India, bought some sweets for his daughter, on the way back, under the banyan tree, found a lot of parrots. He said, hey, parrots, it's that same Kabliwala. You remember, I came here. I took away one of your, one of your ilk. And here is the message that I got from her. That one, I'm very unhappy. I get the best of food, I'm kept in a golden cage, I'm very unhappy. As soon as he said this, and this is the message that I have to carry from Kabul, as soon as he said this, one of the parrots fell down from the branches dead. One of the parrots fell down dead. Now this was the turn of the Kabliwala to feel really bad. He didn't know what to do. He just hung his head in shame, came all the way to Kabul and he met his daughter, gave the sweets. He was unhappy, went straight to the bird and told the bird that, Hey bird, this is the message that I relayed, that you're unhappy, you're very sad, you get everything, but you're not happy. As soon as he said this, the bird fell down dead in the cage. The bird fell down dead. It was a turn of the Kabliwala to feel even more remorse. Now what he did was he called all his friends and he says, look, I want to give this bird a very good burial. And uh, so he got a golden coffin in front of everybody. He slowly lifted the coffin, kept it near the cage, opened the doors of the cage, lifted the bird gingerly and put it on the coffin. And as soon as the bird came out, the bird flew from his hands and reached a perch where nobody could catch it and waited. Now it was the turn of the Kabliwala and he looks at the bird and says, so you were not dead? He says, no, I was never dead. I never, I never died. But thank you for the message. What message? Thank you for the message, Malik, because the message is, Sometimes in order to live, you have to die. Sometimes in order to live, you have to die. Sometimes in order to live, you have to die. All student members who have joined us today, know that you have to leave your past behind. Know that the future is ahead of you. Leave your past. 
द फ्यूचर इज अहेड द फ्यूचर इज अहेड एंड देर फॉर समटाइम्स इन ऑर्डर टू लिव यू हैव टू डाई लीव द पास्ट लुक एट ओनली द फ्यूचर द ओनली थिंग आई कैन टेल यू इन क्लोजिंग अगैन is that if you are from balaji you will do exceedingly well in your life if you are from balaji you will do exceedingly well in your life thank you bala sir thank you all professors thank you parents it was lovely being out here a sincere thank you